Hey guys, I'm Natalie, this is Hey It's A Good Life, and I'm so glad you're here because today we're gonna talk about how I'm planning out the suburban homestead potager garden. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay because it's actually kind of a windy day here and I just found out today that we live in a microclimate. That's gonna be interesting for planning, but onward we go. So let me first show you what I've drafted up. So on this piece of paper is my plan for this garden. As you can see, I think there are nine beds and those nine beds are all gonna go right back there. So let me show you how I plotted this out, how I measured it, and then what tools I'm going to use so that I can not only place my gardens into a design system, but also plan what I'm going to plant. I have some really cool tools in store for you guys, so stay tuned. So for today's video, I'm going to be using this rotary measurement tool. I will link it down below. I'm not an Amazon affiliate yet. It's really cool because it's a great way to measure big spaces. It basically calculates through the movement of the wheel, like feet and inches, I believe. So you can calculate a large space really quickly rather than getting out the measuring tape. I've used all sorts of methods in the past and this one is by far the easiest. So step one in measuring this space is getting a basic depth and width. All right, so you saw me measure once and then you saw me measure twice, which is actually probably the fifth, sixth, maybe even the seventh or eighth time that I've measured, which is fine because if I've learned anything from my husband, the engineer, it's better to measure twice and cut once. And I've learned the hard way. So measure, 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 measure. It's good. Measure as much as you need to. And especially if you're in a new house or a new area that you don't know that well, measure every single segment. Because for me, for example, this area is not even, it's not a perfect rectangle. It's actually about a foot less wide in the back, or I guess you could say a foot wider towards the front of where the garden is gonna be. So I've got a 20 by 16 by 19 foot garden. Okay, so the gardeners are behind me, whatever. First things first, we're going to lay out a design that we like. I like to see what looks right with my eye and visualize it, so let's do that. Imagine it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on behind me with the shadows and the sunshine and everything but as you can see by using some scrap wood that I have laying around the house I'm able to map out generally what I want my garden to look like it also gives me an idea of how much walking space I'll have in between each bed which is crucial because you don't want to feel all cramped and I learned that kind of the hard way from the last garden beds that I built at our apartment I placed visualization first because in my heart, the way I work, I'm super intuitive, very heartfelt person, and so I want it to feel right. I don't want it to just look right. Something can look right but be really rigid and not flow with who you are. So I want this to flow with who I am. So I believe in getting a sense for what it's gonna feel like and look like before you even start to measure. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like right now. We've got our entrance right here, which isn't actually gonna be that wide. In the center walkway, two more garden beds. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then we've got five, six, seven total beds. That's feeling good. This is feeling a little tight. That's feeling good. This is also feeling a little tight. This is feeling good. This is feeling good. And then this is gonna be open. I don't wanna lose garden space, but I also really don't wanna feel crammed. Okay, the gardeners are driving me wild, so let's go inside. Guys, look what's open on my computer. Guys, let me just tell you right now, oils are blowing my mind right now. I am experiencing so much healing from using essential oils. There's been a lot of stress in our lives the last four months. Lavender oil alone is like such a game changer. What are these photos? These photos are for the upcoming vlog. I'm really excited to have a hub for you guys. Stay tuned because the vlog is coming soon. These are cedar fence pickets, which are great because cedar is great for garden beds. Um, I would definitely recommend sealing them. Um, and the ones that I have purchased in the past were from Lowe's. Priced out each one based on the Lowe's 
prices from last time and each one of these is 228. I calculated roughly what I would need for this entire garden and I think it was like 350, something like that. So for a whole garden, a 500 square foot garden to get it started for about 350 bucks is a pretty sweet deal. So anyway, just wanna give you an idea of like what are the garden beds going to look like and to save a little bit more money, they're not gonna be completely covered like this on every side. So this is very basic. Ours are gonna end up looking a little bit different where it doesn't need to be completely covered on the outside, it won't be completely covered. Here is our graph. So here are the garden beds. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Kind of a cool number, I like that number. So that's kind of a rough idea of the garden beds. We'll talk more detail about those later on. I want to show you guys a really neat program that I basically accidentally stumbled upon last year. It's by the same company that makes my worm bin, Gardener Supply. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I just go here to the search bar. I click, uh, I click design your garden. I'll show you how to make one bed and then how to save beds, and then how to load them into the planner. Select your bed width and your bed length. My beds are three feet long by six feet long. Go ahead and save that. It gives you the option to save it. So we'll just call this example. Okay, so then let's say you wanted to save another garden bed and it was the same size. You would just need to save it again and change the file name. So every time you, you rework your garden bed and you want it to be a new bed, just make sure you save it under a new file name so that you can access it later. So now let's design our site. Okay, so here you can see, I already have mine all plotted out, but let's pretend that I hadn't done this. Let's remove everything. And I'm going to show you how you create your plan. So we're going to click place a saved garden. Bed one, demo. Essentially, that's it. You get the idea. You can plot and plan your garden using this tool. Why I like this tool is you can later plug and plot what you want and it will tell you how many to plant in each area. So like for beets, we know we can get a lot of beets in one square foot, so that's good. Basil, not as much, and cabbage, definitely not as much. So kind of a cool tool going forward. Then all you have to do is print this off and take it with you in the garden when it comes time to plant things. So that is how I'm planning our Suburban Potager Homestead Garden. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. If this was helpful to you and it might be helpful to a fellow gardener, please feel free to share this video as well. I would always very much appreciate that. And leave a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Is this something that you would use? Like it, don't like it? How do you feel about this planning tool? I like it because it's free and it's relatively accurate. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. That's it for me today, guys. I will see you guys next time.